What's going on, fam? It is your favorite entrepreneur, Basin Mental. Welcome back to another amalgamation, another amalgamite video. And today we got Enoxa Yamanora. I think you're gonna like her. I had a lot of fun creating her. She is a combination of, again, characters from Naruto Shippuden and Soul Eater. From Naruto, we got Ino, Yamanaka, Sakura's rival, combined with Ox, Ford, Maka's rival, and Soul Eater. I thought that would be a nice, ironic sort of combination considering the rival that would be against her, which is in fact Makora. Thought that would be fun and awesome to do, so I ran with it. I hope you enjoy this video. Let me know your thoughts. But let's get right into her backstory. Also, do me one favor before we get started. Like, comment, share, and subscribe one time for your boy. And hit the notifications so you can be up to date and ready for every Amalgamite movie review, art tutorial, and whatever else I decide to post on this channel, all right? I hope you all like it. Let's get it. First, Enoxa is a, a hothead. She's a bit of a hothead, uh, almost like bipolar. <laughs> Maybe not as extreme as bipolar, but her emotions and things can flip in a heartbeat because she's she's very reserved, very sort of cold but intellectual person when she wants to be, but very emotional and impulsive as well. And of course, she grew up normal. She grew up like anybody else, just she grew up with a clan that was infamous on knowledge. And by gaining knowledge, they learned the abilities to read people while also being able to literally tap into other people's minds. Like she can literally read your mind. It comes with her clan's ability and a practice that you know, she's been given and she worked on basically her entire life since she was a child. As the story goes on, she one day meets someone's mind who she can't read. That happens to be Makora. She is a very, very, very stubborn human being and reading her mind was hard to do because of her stubbornness and her fighting nature. You basically have a hard time trying to get into her head. But she also, you know, has her own psychic blocks or her own ch chakra blocks, or however you want to look at it, to prevent Minoxa from reading her head. And it immediately pissed her off. Because she's been used to being able to just peek in anyone's head when she wants to, being able to, you know, hop in whoever's body, all that good stuff. But until she meets Makora, she cannot figure out why she can't read her mind and she can't jump into her body no matter what she does. So she immediately becomes her rival because now she has a challenge she's got to overcome. And how does she tame the untamable? And this results in a lot of crazy stuff between these two fighting for years. Of course, they become rivals, like so called kind of like best friends. They know each other well, but they're still rivals. Also, they got a crush on the same guy who I haven't created yet. But you'll know who he is. Trust me, you, you won't be able to miss him. Um, it'll be very obvious, <laughs> especially when you hear his name. <laughs> I'm not going to tell you his name yet. Just know his last name is Uchiha. Moving on. Um, Inoxa goes to school with Maka and becomes her intellectual rival because unfortunately for Makora, I'm, I said Maka. Oh. Unfortunately for Makora, Inoxa happens to be smarter than her. So where Inoxa is physically strong, uh, phys mentally adept, where Inoxa is mentally stronger, oh my gosh, Makora is physically stronger. And that makes her that much more of a problem. And of course, her 
kaiju is named Royal Thunder. And Royal Thunder happens to contain two kaijus, both dragons, one dragon of flame and another dragon of lightning. And that's why you see lightning and fire in the image, in the final image. Her clan was one of the last clans to not necessarily tame dragons, but to, how should I, mm, have a live, live, a living coherence with them, live, what's the dang word? Y'all know what I'm trying to say. The word, um, cohabitate with them. They don't like, of course they don't mate or whatever together, that's gross, but they managed to live and work together. They found a balance between, you know, how they chose to live and everything. They know where some dragons are still alive. They're like the safest kaiju to be around, the strongest, which also makes them the most dangerous, but generally gentle creatures. And they, the two that she has are the son and daughter of a mother dragon that had died. And it was Enoxa's duty to take care of those kids, those uh, baby dragons when she died. So as they matured and everything and she developed a weapon, she decided I'll just become a Meister and I'll use my, cha my chakra resonance and everything to basically get a hold of them and make awesome little dudes out of them. And in doing that, she developed Royal Thunder, one named Royal, the other one named Thunder, literally. And they became her double-sided spear, which allows her to access both fire and lightning and a whole lot of extra strength so she can try and keep up with Makora. But of course that comes at a cost and it allows her to amplify her knowledge gaining abilities as well as her mental abilities to jump into someone else's body or to control your body and even read your mind. She became that much dangerous when she mastered how to control the two. And the two dragons can hop in and out of the spear. Like once they reach maturity, of course, they went into the spear and then over time learned to hop in and out and stuff. So they can hop out, chill with her, and then hop back in when it's time to scrap. Fortunately enough for Enoxa, she happens to scrap often because of Makora. <laughs> See, so they, they, no matter how much stronger one gets, the other one comes back and it just, it gets a lot worse. And the more she can't beat her, the more variety she becomes, but the more respect and admiration she tends to have for Makora because she is her opposite. She has the strength to keep up with her, but she has so much knowledge, it can also be her weakness, you feel me? Uh, so I'm kind of like that. And while we at it, uh, make sure you are looking at Makora and uh, Taru, as well as Kid, uh, Shine, and all the other Morgomites before. Make sure you're checking out Izuke. Make sure you're checking out Almighty. Check out my Morgomites. <laughs> Make sure you're checking out my latest movie review on Bloodshot, as well as my Hero Academia, Heroes Rising. I'm going to have another Mogami drop and more movie reviews. I'm going to try and drop some other stuff I don't think y'all are quite used to yet, but it's definitely coming. I just want to see how it does on the channel. These are the main things I wanted to post on the channel in the first place, all right? There are definitely going to be more art tutorials coming. I'm getting them, I'm getting them together, all right? I'm getting them together. And with that being said, we're going to hop right back into the video. Enoxa ended up going to, we called it Death Leaf Academy, I believe, or Leave Death Academy. One of the two. I know we called it Death Academy somewhere. In it. And she does, she ends up on the team with Blank Uchiha. And one other character she hasn't, you all haven't met yet. And I'm not going to mention this one because y'all don't need no sneak peeks yet. <laughs> but she ends up on a team with Uchiha as well as someone else. And I think you might like who it turns out to be. 
as things progress forward, things start getting crazy. It just, you know, it 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 it, it gets good. But for right now, I'm just telling he knocked his story. And wait, we covered her rivalry, the dragon she carries, aka the kaiju she carries, her hot headedness and sweetness. Like that's why I said the bipolar and she can switch from sweet to angry really quickly, which is a little freaky. Uh super smart. My uh Makora's rival in terms of intelligence, but Makora got her beat in terms of strength. Um, what else was I missing? Hmm. Well, sounds like nothing. So the process of making her <laughs> was a lot of fun, actually. It was a lot of fun. It took a while because I can be a bit of a perfectionist, and like most artists, it's like you never put the right pieces uh, of like lines or the right types of lines or colors or something like that on the paper correctly. Like this pose just wasn't enough unless it was exactly what I had in my head. And of course, it's like a little off, but that's fine. Like I managed to be okay with it. I just couldn't find a pose that would allow me to show off how I wanted her to look and show off the spear. So I figured some had to give and that was the hard part. That's what took forever. Cause I wanted it to be an action pose like she was about to fight. So, eh, it is what it is. It was worth a shot though. Definitely worth it. I died. Shoot. I had a lot of fun. I uh, I found out a lot about what I need to repractice in terms of like drawing and shading and shapes and anatomy and perspective and all of that good stuff. So I know I definitely need to go back to my basics, which is a big help. And yeah, man, it's, it was a lot of fun. I've been having fun making these characters because they challenge in my brain and my know-how to create on paper. And it's freaking awesome. Nice challenge. I'm loving it. I hope you all are loving it. Just come back to the channel. Make sure you like, you commenting, you sharing, you subscribing, you hitting that notification bell so you can get a piece of everything I'm gonna be uploading in the future. I'm really, really pushing for it this year, all right? So I need y'all help so I can keep delivering the content y'all wanna see and so on and so forth. All right, fam? I appreciate y'all so much. Thank you for coming to my channel. I hope you come back, but you do me one more favor before you go. Exercise your excuses and go create. It's your favorite entrepreneur, Basement Mental. I will see you in the next one. Peace.